It certainly didn't originate exclusively with Niches Land Trust. Uh, there's many organizations uh, that have thought about this project for a long time. Uh, the Tippecanoe County Parks Department, their master plan has identified this as a goal. Uh, currently, the uh, Wabash River Enhancement Corporation has some efforts going on, um, as well as Niches has had it in our strategic plan for uh, a while now. Um, and uh, just a, a, a funny anecdote I'll just share right off the bat. Um, early on when I started uh, back around 2007, 2008, uh, I presented to the Warren County Parks Department and uh, um, thought I was gonna have a favorable, uh, friendly audience there. And after talking about the idea of the trail and the work we we're gonna do, and uh, John Henry got up and told me, looked at me and said, young man, people have been talking about this idea for years and years and what makes you any different? And uh, it was a good humbling experience uh, for myself uh, uh, on that. And, uh, but without further ado, uh, let's uh, uh, get into kind of talking about the trail. All right, Julia, I'm gonna go back and we're gonna reshare that one here. There we go. All right, sorry about that. Um, so in our strategic plan, we've identified a goal to have a hiking trail, uh, backpacking opportunity to go from Delphi to Seekit Park. Um, and uh, we've uh, conceptually thought about our next level of strategic plan. And we often talk about making it all the way to Portland Arch actually. Uh, so altogether, we're gonna have, talking about a 50 mile plus uh, hiking opportunity. Uh, this wouldn't be entirely niches held. Uh, it's making use of uh, some of the great work that some of our partners are involved in, um, but it's also something that builds off of um, their work um, in terms of connecting and interconnecting this to be that uh, 50 miles, hopefully in the future. So what is that trail? Um, just on this map, the 40 miles from Delphi uh, to Seekit Park is in purple there. And uh, the white on the far left is the, uh, extension from Seekit Park down to Portland Arch. Uh, you can see it makes use of the Deer Creek corridor as it winds down to um, the uh, Wabash River corridor and making use of the Wabash as it works its way uh, downstream. So conceptually working through this, uh, thinking about this from east to west, um, uh, we would start at Niches High Bridge um, uh, at our Whistler Woods. And we have a lot of great partners there, Indiana Landmarks, the Heartland Heritage Inc., uh, the city of Delphi, um, all working together uh, with the Next Level Trails Project, which is supported by the state. Um, so in this particular section and in, in the, uh, the walkway that will be the terminus in this case, overlooking Deer Creek will be a very majestic, uh, somewhere around 70 feet overlooking in Deer Creek Valley, um, heading west into town. Um, they've done a, an amazing work there uh, along the old Monon Trail, um, including the Freedom Bridge over the Hoosier Heartland Highway. Uh, this uh, um, uh, monument to the, the trains that used to go through the, um, on the trail there. And it's building on the work that the city of Delphi and, and the many not-for-profit partners have been working on for many years there in town, uh, particularly the Wabash and Erie Canal Association. So in this case, um, if you follow the cursor, um, this is a high bridge area, um, working our way into town um, through there, hooking up through the uh, Wabash and Heritage Trail, coming down through Bicycle Bridge is how we will uh, foresee kind of moving through uh, the, the, the area. Uh, the Wabash, or I'm sorry, the Wabash and Erie Canal uh, and the Delphi Trail System uh, goes along the old canal path. Um, there's been a really nice uh, combination up on the upper right. You can see some of the uh, historic uh, tools used um, parting for the lime kilns. And there's some really great interpretive materials that are along the uh, trail in this location, providing that kind of background of, of what um, made Delphi a, 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 an important area uh, back in the 1850s when the canal was active uh, mode of transport and, and moving, uh, uh, progressing. Uh, Indiana into the future. Um, this portion of the trail is uh, a national recreational trail um, and uh, uh, has a lot of features, including the historic structures um, in the Wabash and Erie Canal Association. 
heading west over Bicycle Bridge, uh, we have a gap as we head uh, towards Prophet Sound State Park. Um, the vision that we have for the time being is to make use of roads um, and obviously acquiring ground as we can, moving it along the Wabash River. Uh, in some areas that will be a narrow corridor, uh, depending on what we can secure. Um, in other areas, it will be a widening forested corridor where we're able to acquire the floodplain ground, uh, plant it to trees and uh, grow the depth and width of that landscape. One of the challenges uh, that the organ that the trail has is the Indiana State Parks has a goal of uh, being able to charge a fee for everyone who enters the park, which makes it really difficult to have a trail that moves through the property. Um, we are fortunate that there is in the long term goal of Prophetstown State Park to have an east entrance in there um, that would be some sort of trail system. And this would envision uh, that entrance on that far east end um, and then being it being able to move into the park, whether that was through some self check-in station or however that would be handled, people would be move in and then be able to hike the many miles of trail that go across the state park. Prophetstown, as I'm sure everyone is uh, well aware, um, has a many uh, uh, large restorations, um, both from Oak Savannah, uh, prairie restorations, uh, as well as other features of importance, uh, a monument to the Native Americans that were there, uh, the historic farm at Prophetstown, which is uh, um, uh, a farm that's supposed to be the early uh, 20th century when tractors were just getting started. Uh, it has uh, Native American uh, villages and, and, and or buildings and, and kind of an example of that. Um, and it's nearby the battleground, uh, which was the uh, site of the battle in 1811. Um, as the trail moves across there, it also has a really important feature. Uh, it's got a camping ground. <laughs> so a place to lay your head down uh, because 50 miles is a long way to go in one day. Um, uh, I imagine most people won't be utilizing it well during the dead of winter um, in this kind of picture here. But uh, one thing about using Prophetstown in the winter is you probably have the campground to yourself out there. Um, so as I said, um, the park, the state park has a goal of actually having that entrance in place and the vision that we have have uh, would definitely make use of that um, and sees that as an essential feature um, to, uh, uh, for, the, for this trail to happen. After a night's sleep, uh, you'd head west and continue um, out of the park and there's a very short gap um, until you pick up uh, the Wabash River Heritage Trail um, at Davis Ferry. There's a, a, a leg that goes north uh, along Burnett's Creek uh, to uh, Wabashiki and Battleground. Uh, you wouldn't take that right turn, you'd take the left and go over the Wabash and then take that trail heading towards town. Um, the trail is a, a, usually it's a fairly narrow corridor with ag um, after that, that, that woodlands. Um, most of it is on a natural earthen treadway, but as you get closer into town, into Lafayette, West Lafayette, um, both cities have uh, paved the landscape. Um, there's a recent addition uh, put in by uh, Duke or in, with Duke support uh, that's uh, uh, accessible for people with uh, uh, accessibility issue, issues, um, mobility issues on the landscape. Um, hey, moving Gus, through. Gus, as, yeah. you're, as you're sharing. Can you talk a little bit about what sections of the trail are currently completed? So you've shared a, a little bit about um, two trail systems now, and can you share how, what pieces are in place and what pieces along this trail still need to be completed? Sure, there's about a, um, uh, a, a four mile gap from the west end of Delphi to getting to the east end of the park. Now there's no entrance to the park and the bigger issue there is the entrance into the park. The entrance or the gap from the west end of Prophetstown going out Swisher Road and then picking up the Wabash Heritage Trail is less than a quarter mile. Um, it, it's, a, it's a really close before you pick up. There's 14 miles of trail in the Wabash River Heritage Trail. Uh, and that takes people all the way from uh, Battleground through Lafayette, West Lafayette um, to uh, Fort Wyotna. So, uh, Thing. Uh, and again, depending on the pace of someone's travel and how many, how long they want to, uh, uh, the uh, cultural amenities they want to take in on a trip, you can 
uh, you, know, you couldn't camp uh, uh, legally along the trail. Um, there are places you could obviously stay in downtown Lafayette, West Lafayette, if you were being doing a, a through hiking experience and taking in the amenities. But if you didn't stop in town or just grab something to eat as you pass through at top of Wingo Park, uh, you would end up at Fort Wyotnan. Uh, Fort Wyotnan is one of uh, three uh, forts, French forts from the early 18th century, 1720s. Uh, the other two have been uh, destroyed, paved over. Um, they weren't uh, preserved in a way that uh, we're lucky to have Fort Wyotnan in the community. Um, Fort Wyotnan recently uh, was recognized as a National Historic Landmark. Um, so again, picking up another uh, feature in the landscape uh, or on the trail that's uh, been recognized nationally for its importance. Probably, all, I'm sure everyone's familiar with the many things at Fort Wyotnan from the feast uh, to the, uh, the rebuilt fort here. Uh, it is not the uh, real fort. Uh, the real fort is uh, about a half mile, three quarters of a mile to the west. Uh, and the trail right now terminates at what was what is the park, what you see here, but it would continue along the river uh, as how we have it envisioned and uh, move uh, towards the Ross Hills. Here's a gap and this gap for, uh, would be, is a few miles long and uh, um, we would be working hopefully to secure uh, access either whether it's uh, along the river ideally uh, or along the road system to move people uh, west into the Ross Hills area. Um, traditionally, uh, the organization Niches has uh, worked with fee ownership. And so uh, I think as we look at and think about the acquisition of a trail, um, easements, access, access easements are, will be much more something that is, comes into play to hopefully create that uh, thoroughfare for people to move across the land. On this photo or image here, um, uh, let's see, where's my cursor? There's the cursor there. Uh, this is the Fort Wyotnan area. Um, and then you have this gap and then you pick up uh, a portion that has quite a bit of conservation ownership. On this map you see in front of you, red is our niches land trust held properties. Uh, this turquoise here is Wabash River Enhancement Corporation, uh, Purdue Research Foundation in black and the Tippecanoe County Parks Department in green. Uh, and you can see there's some, some gaps in there, but over the years we've been able to uh, acquire many tracts of land um, that pulls together this, this system uh, on the landscape. Here, um, uh, much like the Delphi and uh, at Prophetstown, there are more than one trail. So this would be kind of comparable um, uh, to, uh, there's a kind of a, a thoroughfare through, but there'll be side trails that will allow opportunities to hike up into uh, various parts of the Ross Hills, up into Black Rock, uh, up into Wiley Leopold, um, as the trail moves across that landscape. We have the idea long term of a, uh, of a marker or that would honor the uh, uh, a darker chapter in uh, United States history, uh, the, the forced uh, 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 or eviction of the Potawatomi people in 1838. And um, one of the spots that they camped is a niche's Potawatomi Trail. I guess camp is not the quite right word um, when you're being held at gunpoint, um, but one of the spots they stayed in their forced migration to, to the West. Moving beyond, um, uh, we enter the first nature preserve, um, Black Rock um, along the trail. Um, and then shortly thereafter, we enter Wyatt Leopold, another state dedicated nature preserve. Uh, this is, uh, Black Rock is the highest promontory uh, over the Wabash. It stands over 100 feet overlooking the valley of the Wabash and is uh, a stunning view uh, in the, uh, uh, particularly in the fall when, uh, in the winter when you can see the whole valley. Uh, Niches has been hard at work for over 20 years at Wyatt Leopold um, and it's some, a lot of the acreage in here, opening them up, returning fire, controlling invasive species, um, and uh, uh, should be a very, um, you know, long-term as more additions are made and interconnects the landscape, will be quite a, a destination for, uh, to explore the natural history of the region. The west end of, of Wild Leopold will then uh, see us moving to the west um, and moving to Thicket Park. Uh, Secret Park is uh, um, another one of our partners, Warren County Park Board manages it. Um, uh, Zacharias Secret uh, was the 
uh, first European to settle in the uh, what would become Warren County. And he had a trading post at that location and lived there for um, uh, many years and uh, uh, assisted uh, General Harrison in scouting before the Battle of uh, uh, Tippecanoe. And he lived uh, his entire life in Independence and is buried there in town. Um, Independence today is a pretty sleepy little town. I think you can get some ice cream there. Um, but back during the canal days, uh, it had a hotel and uh, they did an active, uh, uh, would send people, the canals on the other side of the river, but they would uh, um, pull them across uh, and, and had a competing business with uh, the town of um, uh, Mayfield uh, or Maystown, Maystown um, on the other side. So it's hard to believe um, is sleepy little Fountain County and Warren County were battling each other um, back in the 1850s uh, and were thriving communities because um, they're uh, um, uh, pleasant little places today, but not a very active commerce department section in either other town. One of the nice things about Seacott Park as well, uh, this will be uh, your uh, uh, have restrooms there as well as another trail access. Um, and I forgot to mention, uh, but in the Ross Hills, uh, they have a campground um, that the County Parks Department maintains. And as you make it through the, uh, um, uh, the through Lafayette, West Lafayette and head west, that would be your next uh, uh, legal uh, place to uh, set up your tent and uh, uh, enjoy uh, a good night's sleep. Um, and they have some nice new bathhouses there. It's a nice, very nice place to camp. From Seekit, we're once again um, uh, having a, a, a gap as we move across. More than one property within this gap is Niche's new uh, Kickapoo Cliffs, uh, which is uh, um, uh, near Kickapoo Creek. And as we're over time, we hope to, again, continue to add things so that the trail would be mostly along the river, um, but in the short term uh, would be could utilize roads in order to move across the landscape uh, heading towards the town of Williamsport. Williamsport um, is uh, another place to refuel, grab some food, and uh, um, also is home to the largest waterfall in Indiana, or tallest waterfall. Um, there are bigger ones by volume, and, uh, and uh, it's a very scenic spot. Uh, the city of Williamsport is working on amending, or not amending, but improving the trail system in town um, all the way uh, through the whole valley there and is, is actively working to uh, increase the accessibility and, and uh, um, enjoyment of people who visit the property and uh, um, take in the waterfall. From Williamsport, um, you're heading heading west towards the uh, Williamsport Bridge uh, and landscape, and again, utilizing a combination of you know as we uh, successfully pull off uh, grabbing, uh, not grabbing, but uh, acquiring uh, or uh, securing easements across the land or roads uh, crossing the bridge and entering uh, Niche's Shawnee Bottoms property. Uh, Shawnee Bottoms, we'll get back on the uh, uh, river left and where we pick up the Wabash and Erie Canal again. Uh, Niches has about a mile and a quarter of our three and a half mile trail system at Shawnee Bottoms that utilizes um, the Wabash and Erie Canal towpath. Um, so that's a, a nice kind of relatively flat section of the, uh, the trail again that should be um, nice. And this image on your left hand side, uh, Niches, this is Scott's Pond in the Wabash River here. And the Wabash and Erie Canal travels along Scott's Pond, uh, heading south um, until you get to around Portland Arch, right around down here in this part, neck of the woods. Um, Shawnee Bottoms is uh, Niche's uh, largest property today at, at a little over 500 acres. Um, it's a beautiful uh, combination of floodplain restorations, uh, upland oak woodlands. Um, it's got seeps on it. It's um, got bedrock, sandstone bedrock outcrops, and again, another um, really, really, really nice place to uh, learn about the natural world and, and see uh, the work and restoration uh, uh, that, that has been done and what the woods around here could be. Uh, there are a few improvements that we'd like to see at Shawnee Bottom eventually uh, along the towpath. There were some old bridges that have been uh, long since uh, 
uh, fallen by the wayside uh, and a few key bridges would add to uh, the improvement of the accessibility of that mile and a quarter of a uh, towpath. Uh, this is a, uh, an artist's rendition of, of what one of those bridges could look like um, a little bit to the south end of Scott's Pond. From Shawnee Bottoms, we have a, um, a rather short path. It's less than a quarter mile uh, to uh, Portland Arch, uh, which we are, see as the uh, terminus at this time. Uh, just one landowner separates us right now, um, but you could walk through the town of Fountain in order to get to Portland Arch and take in uh, the Western terminus. Portland Arch today is a uh, uh, national natural landmark and uh, it's uh, owned by the DNR. It's uh, just an amazing site. Um, you can see the arch on the far west or left-hand side of the image over here. <coughs> and those of you that have been there know it's special, but those of you who have not, uh, it's a 80-foot uh, canyon that runs through on Bear Run um, and uh, white pines up on top, uh, uh, lots of rare plants, boreal relics that are uh, restricted to the cool uh, valley and uh, um, part of the uh, uh, really special heritage of uh, uh, floristic heritage of the region um, and uh, a unique kind of location in the landscape. The trail in many regards seems um, uh, uh, I think when you originally, when I originally think about it, it, it seems like it's would be hard to happen, make happen. And I think if, if a few things fall into place for us and build upon the, the really um, uh, amazing things that many partners have done um, and niches has done, uh, we really could make a compelling case for why this trail should happen and why um, resources can get marshaled uh, to make it happen. A couple things to highlight, the National Recreational Trail, the National Historic Landmark, and a national natural landmark all uh, recognized already, uh, the dedicated nature preserves um, along it um, and historic sites starting from the 1700s all the way to today um, of many different eras um, that are in there, uh, as well as the opportunity to uh, improve the water quality of the Wabash and connect our natural areas to make a more functioning and viable uh, natural system along the river uh, that all would, um, benefit, um, as well as the uh, the trail system that obviously was uh, primarily a beneficiary for the people that would uh, be footing along it. So again, as you see as the trail moves across here, um, there are surprisingly um, uh, the distance, as I said, there's uh, a few gaps out there, but we're looking at um, 20 to 25 uh, landowners that would pull together the uh, virtually all of this trail system at this point um, for uh, large sections of it at least. Uh, so it's it's eminently possible um, uh, as everyone I sure here knows uh, niches is uh, a willing seller willing partner uh, in their land acquisition or easement acquisition process and so the big thing for us is to how to um, uh, create that groundswell both to have the money uh, in place to acquire land where we can and the landowner support to see this work moving forward. Um, and that's uh, the essence of what we're trying to do with the trail uh, in terms of making it happen. I'd love to hear kind of people's thoughts and questions and uh, have a dialogue on what people see, the, what we can and what, what we can do. So, so hey, Matt, I saw you just put a question in the, in the comments. If you wanna just unmute yourself and ask us. Um, now that we've reached the question and answer portion, um, if you've got a question for Gus or want to discuss anything, you can go ahead and unmute yourself. Okay, can do that. Yeah. So in the uh, Lafayette area, lots of the trails are often getting flooded during winter or whenever the war was, uh, floods. Those pay, uh, trails are paved and they can withstand the flooding relatively well. So if we put a trail from Nature's property and open a trail, and then it gets washed out all the time or flooded and uh, is under three feet of sand after the water retreats. Does it get uh, it, Yeah, it's actually, Matt, it's actually easier to maintain the trail without the, um, the paving 
uh, causes problems. Um, uh, and when sand falls over a, a natural earth trail, you just keep walking over sand and it's just a little higher. Um, the, uh, the, the city of Lafayette and West Lafayette and, and sections of the trail need to you know, bring out snow plows and, and various mechanisms in order to clean off the trail. Because um, the reason this trail is possible, of course, is the vast majority is, is in the floodplain of the Wabash. And, and you know, from a development standpoint, it's, uh, you can't put houses in, but it also puts challenges for accessibility. I think there'll be very limited sections that will be accessible. Of course, the, the Delphi area is accessible along the towpath. Um, areas in town that Lafayette and West Lafayette maintain and a lot of Prophetstown uh, has paved trails across. Um, and we hope that sections, you know, such as if we can get the bridge put in at, at Shawnee Bottoms, that there'll be portions that'll be easily accessible for people with mobility issues. But the vast majority of this should be on, on, on earthen trails, earth, earth landscape. Gus, I've got a, pro a question. Go Gus? ahead. Yeah. Oh, this this Dan McCain in Delphi, uh, the far end of your trail really intrigues me where you're at uh, Portland Arch because the thing that you miss saying anything about is it's a fascinating section of the canal that was created out of the, with a trough right through the rock, right beside, directly beside the Wabash River. And if you've never seen that, it, it's, it's most uh, unusual because of its uh, location. Now there is some animosity among people that own land down there and, I, and you could be met with somebody that <laughs> may not want you on, on, the, on his property, but, but there is a, a street that's Topaz Street right next to the river and then it drops off immediately to the river level. And um, some places are only wide enough for one boat to get through. So when they would have to stay, I mean, if there was a passage in there, they had a couple wider spots where, where boats could pass. So you missed that. Well, yeah, there's there's a there's a, there's a lot of history right there from. But yes, there there's um uh, there, the bedrock exposure, particularly down there. Um, I you know I've I've been told it led to uh, uh you know just a really slow pace uh, accidents with uh, dynamiting and and all sorts of they're, they're kind of. Uh, but yes, it's it's a beautiful area, um, and uh, to your point. Obviously, that there are sections that um, uh, will stay private, and people will, um, mm. you know, we won't get access to. But hopefully, over time, those people will, and the reluctance oh. to the heritage that will could be exposed to will will win out. And... But a further comment would be what you're doing by hooking up to Delphi. I love that. I and and that's that's been for for a long time a goal of ours is to connect Delphi to Prophetstown, and the sooner we can get that. A corridor marked and and an access into the park that uh, the volume of people that could be coming both ways and, and coming towards uh, Delphi could increase dramatically. Yeah I think that um, a, a key linchpin I would agree with you completely Dan that, that, that getting that east access into the state park uh, would help people see this um, as a uh, uh, a really viable option, and and the the other part of moving from the east end to you know the crossing uh, at Bicycle Bridge, I mean that could e have a lot of variability again of using roads um, or or as acquisitions are made, you know using the river. Yeah, really beautiful, great. Probably the most dangerous spot would be South River Road west of Fort Wyattonen, um in terms of utilizing the road as a place to travel. The, the um, the other sections of the of the trail, um, by by and large, are fairly lightly um, trafficked uh, county roads. I'd like to say something about accessibility and mobility issues because I have accessibility and mobility issues, but I can ride a bicycle and I want to ride a bicycle. And right now, the Wabash Heritage Trail, I didn't even know this until recently, their website says, please do not ride your bicycle on anywhere on the Wabash Heritage Trail. I thought there were just some parts you couldn't, some parts you couldn't. <clears throat> Got my bike start, stuck there big time a year and a half ago in one of those flooded places. And it's, it's neat to hear what you said, Gus, about how, yeah, paved is worse because then they have to excavate the collapsed sand and mud off of it but I would and, and I know people hate cyclists because so many cyclists are so let's say effing rude 
<laughs> and I have never been a rude cyclist. Uh, I've always been a very respectful cyclist. And I would love to see cycling incorporated in parts of this. And in fact, I think we might be able to have a Rick Westerman Memorial contribution to parts of this trail. If so, they could be bicycle friendly. Sure. I mean, so of course, Prophetstown has a great bicycle trail system. Um, and that's, uh, of course, accessible right now. Um, my understanding is Lafayette, West Lafayette, where they've paved it, bicycles are okay, but maybe I'm wrong on that. Um, I know that the county I controls portions of- in charge of that. I think people are, I don't even think the people in charge are clear on it. For sure. But I know the county portions of the Wabash Heritage Trail are, are close to bicycles. And that was part of the agreement with the landowners when they secured the trail. I'm not sure why that was important to the landowners, but it is it is part of it. And it's, you know, Niches, of course, is well aware that, you know, um, it's, it's important to honor the agreements that you put in place with uh, when you negotiated deals. Um, uh, I guess and, I'm asking that maybe you don't allow that to be a part of it. Well, if possible, it would be nice to allow cycling because cycling, I can cycle. I can cycle. I have severe arthritis sure. in my spine. Yep. I have osteoarthritis, or osteoarthritis and um, yeah, I just, I can't walk very well. I can't hike anymore. Yep. But I can ride a bicycle for a hundred miles. Well, I can't ride now because I'm a little out of practice. <laughs> I could get back to that pretty easily at 67. Hey, come to Delphi. You know what? We, ours are bicycle friendly and we get lots of people from the Lafayette area that come because it's wide and it's stone and uh, you can explore a lot of area. Thanks for that encouragement, and I will. I got this big dog that I got to out <laughs> before I can really travel a lot, bicycle a lot. But I am gonna do it by golly. But I mean, you could you could imagine that um, you know once the bicycle entrance is is created on the east side of the state park, um, you could very easily you know park on the on the west end of the state park, ride through it, come out, um, go on the county roads up to Delphi, and then work your way back. Um, I mean, there's a nice, uh, it's probably a 35, 40 mile ride, depending on how much, you know, kind of side shoots you do right now. Um, yeah. And having something that's a, a combination of utilizing county roads as well as, um, you know, the off-road aspects. Yep, that, that last year, it works. So Joseph just wants to speak a little bit about the, the bike. Uh... Well, okay, so I, I, I work with Mary Cutler. Uh, most of you, some of you probably know her. Um, yeah. On the, on the north end of the Wabash Trail, um, where it crosses Burnett's Creek a couple times, um, there would have to be major uh, infrastructure improvements by typically New County Parks. Um, and I, you know, I can't speak for the Parks Department, but um, it, would, it would be a lot to, and, and another reason that they don't want bikes up there is any unimproved trail, um, bikes are gonna, if it's a little bit muddy, bikes, bikes are gonna tear the trail up. Um, and that's kind of the reason why they don't want them on the Northern section there. Um, I mean, I, 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 as far as I knew, working at Wabashika, uh, bikes were allowed once you get past um, onto the, the paved areas. But if, if the website says different, I, I can't speak to that. And I, and I did have a question about how do you get, how, what, what are your plans for getting across the Tippecanoe River? Is there a bridge or some sort there? Yeah, it, would, it would basically utilize the bridge um, in that case. We're certainly not building any new bridges. And, uh, um, uh, you know, so that, that would utilize the road access to, um, that's already there. Hi, I'm Cheryl. A question, and I, yes. Hey, Cheryl, I, how you doing? I, I'm great. Uh, can you hear me okay? Okay. So uh, I didn't want to pile on too hard with the accessibility issue, uh, but I do have questions about it. And, and I have uh, a sister that has MS who doesn't feel secure unless she's walking across a, a paved section. Um, you know, I, I know there are sections in Lafayette and West Lafayette that are solidly paved, but there are times when I wonder if, um, I mean, all of these great things are available to people who are very mobile, but people who are challenged in their mobility and their balance and things like that are kind of missing out. I was wondering if there's some kind of thought process that might 
uh, involve finding ways to help them experience the trail, even if they can't be on the trail and be safe, you know? Sure, sure. It, yeah, we, we've talked about, um, I mean, creating like virtual trail experiences um, that would allow people um, uh, to vicariously uh, experience the, the trail experience and having those time for like during spring wildflowers and whatnot. Um, uh, they, they haven't happened yet. We've talked about, you know, with even like doing float trips down the Wildcat Creek that would be, you know, uh, video and interpretation that goes on. I think that there's a, a, a big spectrum of opportunity there that could be improved. Um, uh, and I, I think that, you know, uh, related to the mobility issue, I, I would, I think ideally that there would be sections all along here that would have portions of it that are very easily accessible for um, people with mobility issues. Um, my, my, my mother is MS2 and is in a wheelchair and I, I you know, relate to those issues uh, well, um, but also recognize that you know, the, um, the cost of maintaining and you know, the whole stretch of the, river, the trail through the floodplain is, is, would be uh, cost prohibitive. Um, so I think I would like, what, ideally what I would see is there's just those portions that could be fairly long, like Prophetstown's a very really long section, Delphi's a long section. If you know, we would be a, potentially have a, um, you know, over a mile at our Shawnee Bottoms with that one bridge that we need to have in there to make it happen. Um, and then, uh, uh, so I think it, you know, having a combination will, will uh, hopefully meet the needs broadly of the community. Yeah, that's kind of what I, I'm hopeful of too, because, you know, that, that's a large section, you know, the aging population and, and people with various disabilities are just continuing to grow. And I just kind of feel like I'm becoming more and more aware of their exclusion, <laughs> just, just because of the nature of different parts of it. So I, I'm kind of curious to know if there's like thoughts about potentially using uh, drones to go through the trail, to video parts of the trail, to add to a virtual experience um, for somebody else. You know, there's so much that can be done anymore with those sorts of things. I'm just curious. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, if anyone's got a really good drone that's on the call or has some good <laughs> film <laughs> editing experience, we would love to enlist your help in creating that virtual trail. Um, so. The fun part is I keep learning about more and more people in my sphere that are growing that are doing those sorts of things, but you know they're still on the periphery <laughs> for the most sure. part. Yeah. Sorry, Gus. <laughs> yeah. No. I, I, oh, I mean, if you got me like a uh, the number of like drone shots that I wish we could uh, get and then uh, incorporate and, and and share with people and stuff like that, it's it'd be a lot. I you know, but yeah, it's it's a lot of work to create good, good content. Um, you know, and, and we are look, starting to look at that is, is, and including that in the budget to roll out some of those aspects and, and working with some of the community foundations to, um, uh, do work on particular preserves that will provide that virtual experience for people to, to know more about it or to experience it, um, from their, from their home or wherever they are. Right. So, Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, so talk about budget. Other than acquiring areas or um, land, what's the highest cost in realizing the whole thing? Oh, that's by far the, the, the lion's share of, of the, of the, you know, um, uh, you know, there, you know, maintenance of trails and stuff. Uh, most of this is not like the work you've helped us, Matt, at Clegg, where it's, uh, you know, fortifying slopes and stuff. Um, you know, most of this would be uh, relatively flat. Um, the sections that aren't flat, um, you know, such as in the Ross Hills, Black Rock and whatnot, um, you know, we, uh, some improvement would have to occur in trails and, um, uh, but, uh, so that, that mowing would need to occur. Uh, of the trail system, um, but the biggest, biggest cost by far is um, uh, selling and then finding willing sellers to, to, to fill in the gaps. Uh, I was hoping when we were, we scheduled this, we had the land deal just uh, collapse um, just down from Wiley Leopold that they would be like, oh, and we just, we're finishing this deal and um, it, it fell apart at the last minute. Um, you would have been 90 acres between Wiley Leopold and Seekit uh, to get that down to just three landowners in between uh, the two. I um, mean, starting to make that Black Rock to Seekit Park section look really obtainable. Um, uh, so anyway, yeah, the cost is is definitely uh, of land is the big one. Gus, 
you mentioned is the Wiatnan Preserve, the Roy Whistler Wiatnan Preserve, the one national historic landmark that you mentioned. You went way too fast for my foggy brain. Sure. Could yeah. Tell. Um the, the the Roy Whistler project or Fort Wiatnan Roy Whistler. I can't even remember the full name. It's a long it's one. Built, well, um, it's not part of the Fort Wiatnan at all, but it's called the Wiatnan Preserve. It's right. Um so right. There's there's all sorts of um uh and I, I might have some of this uh, wrong, but the um, the park is actually owned by the county, um, yep. and but then TCHA, Tippecanoe County Historical Association, uh, part of that deal had you know some some rights associated, and that's where, it hap where how the feast happens. And that isn't really the the real fort. The real fort's just downstream. And Roy Whistler Foundation helped uh, the Way Out and Preserve a separate organization that was created to secure that land. Um, and uh, they've just recently embarked on retiring that ag ground, um, and so that's been planted to grass, um, and they're going to do, uh, keep that in grass, or that's their hope and intention, um, so which allows some uh, research to be able to occur on the landscape, you know, detecting wooden posts and kind of mapping kind of the historic use of the landscape uh, at the time it was a fort. Um, so there are a lot of different partners involved, some of them, uh, uh, you know, with not a whole lot of ownership stake, some of them with larger ownership stakes in this, but it's um, all together would, I mean, it go across like 10 or 12 different agencies in kind of a perfect world, which makes complications, you know, rather than just having uh, all under like one or two agencies to. But the Wiatnan Reserve and the Whistler Foundation is working with niches on having this trail pass through there. Is that correct? Yes, um, I've talked with Colby um, and they're, uh, so oh, right. Right. the Wattenham Preserve's concern is having the trail move through the historic uh, fort, but the river has actually moved south something like 80 um, meters or so. Yeah, um, I knew that. And so the, having the trail go along uh, what is ground that was river um, in the 1720s, they're perfectly comfortable with. Um, but they yeah. do have, they do want to have some control over um, the utilize, utilization of the land above where the fort actually was in, in, a, in a village. Yeah. Wow, that, okay, that's interesting. Thank you. Any other thoughts and questions out there? I, I do have another question. And, you know, this is an ambitious question. Are there ambitions to potentially go further down the Wabash Canal area past Portland Arch? Yeah. <laughs> you know, because or, or above Delphi. <laughs> it, above exactly. Delphi. I mean, what are the the ambitions? I mean, obviously, this is hugely ambitious to do uh, in a. You've got a plan to do it within a time frame. I'm sure of yeah. projection. So um, I, that's great. I, um, I'll, I'll share with you, Cheryl. Um, I did a bicycle loop um, uh, from Tippecanoe River State Park, which is north of Winnemac you can take the Panhandle pathway down to Logansport on bicycle paths. Logansport is uh, just off the, on the upper right here. And getting from Logansport down to Delphi, um, following the Wabash River Valley um, is uh, eminently possible. Um, and uh, we haven't, um, I know there are other people thinking about that now. Um, and, but it, it, so it's not in the plan and, and I've, thought about that much more than I've thought about the downstream from uh, Portland Arch. Um, it's not far to Covington, which has a circle trail or all around town. Um, and you could imagine, um, you know, the, the process continuing downstream until you get down to uh, Terre Haute. Yeah, I mean, oh yeah, why not, why not dream big, right? Right, that, that was my well, thought. It just, you well, know, well, I, I'm, well, I'm I mean, a Fountain County girl originally. So, you know, my brain was like, well, they've got all the courthouse murals in Covington. And, and Gus, right will off do, of the Gus will do this all. Let's have Gus do this all right, right. now. Well, <laughs> but magic well, wand is not available. So, <laughs> well, I mean, part of this is, you know, I mean, putting it out there and getting people talking, getting feedback right. and, and, and then, um, you know, hopefully inspiring kind of both uh, um, people to work with you. I know uh, Dan McCain, who's spoken up earlier. I mean, he's he's got a, a lot of, I should pick his brain a lot more in terms of uh, uh, getting permission from hiking around the, the canal. And, you know, there, there's a process of, you know, I think we've been limited ourselves to just thinking about acquisition in the past and that we should probably be more 
expanding our thinking to include access easements, you know, that might be that a through affairs for hikers through um, various properties to connect up. You know, we're one one landowner away from connecting Portland Arch and Shawnee Bottoms. We're one landowner from connecting the Ross Hills to Black Rock. You know, we're one landowner from uh, the east end of the uh, wreck to the Parker's Indian Creek Basin. And, you know, there's, there's some that are just like, seem like they're right there, but with the willing seller base, you know, you, they could be there for uh, 20 years. They might happen next week. Who knows? Um, that I understand. <laughs> always ask how old is the landowner because that may change, you know? It, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you get lucky and somebody will will the land to you and yeah, it'll be a right. done deal. <laughs> somebody will see the light or something. Yeah, for sure. But I mean, I think there's a lot to celebrate. You look at this 20 years yeah. ago, I mean, before Profitstown got started, you know, and, you know, that's a, a big, big um, chunk of that landscape. And, and again, I mean, I think, you're, you know, I was super encouraged talking with Jason Getz that, you know, it's within their master plan to have the East End. We just need to figure out a way that kind of allows them to um, check their boxes of you know, wanting to um, be able to have people that enter are paying a fee and paying their, you know, not just cheating the system, so to speak, and, you know, and not getting their state park pass. And, um, uh, you know, maybe there's a, um, uh, there's a system there that could be, you know, that the communities of Lafayette and Delphi make a, a payment in lieu from people to be accessed. I mean, there's a couple of different, you know, we need to think creatively and that allows them to um, mm -hmm. have their, uh, uh, meet their needs. I mean, they are the landowner, um, but also allow it to serve the greater community, which I think is, um, uh, and I think this trail would if, they, if it was created. Good. Has, has Wonderful there been program. any? Uh, Go ahead, Mike. Has there been any thought to uh, uh, a canoe trail or canoe camps along this route? Um, well, currently, uh, the city of Attica, as I understand, allows people to camp in the park. Um, and the Ross Hills, uh, the county, Tippecanoe County Parks Department, allows people to camp uh, on their property. Um, uh, and they also make use of uh, the amphitheater. Um, they don't advertise that really well, but if you talk to the County Parks Department, they do let people do it. Um, so functionally, the, this whole system um, has good access um, for people to camp. It's just not, um, uh, we, we just need to work with the county to kind of have that more known and better signed on the landscape. Um, yeah. We get another unique opportunity uh, in Delphi, right beside our trail coming through Canal Park are three log, small log structures, which we're going to put on Airbnb. We haven't got them open yet, but, but hopefully summer sometime we'll be doing that. And you can rent that for the weekend or, or overnight. Well, that's awesome. Yeah. You can uh, spend a little bit longer in Delphi before you met, you hoof it over to uh, stay at the Prophetstown State Park. Uh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes, that's great. Any other thoughts people have on how to how to make this 